Hey-o! What is up, guys? It is J-Rob back here again with you guys for yet again another awesome tournament guide and walkthrough video here for the quarterback tournament. So with the Super Bowl right around the corner, guys, we figured we'd throw up some nice Kansas City and Tampa Bay artwork up there on the screen for you. But we're headed over to Eagles Peak and Sunshine Glades. So before we dive deep into all the holes we got today, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's hop on to it. All right, guys, what is up? Welcome to the Pro and Expert Division guide and walkthrough video here for Sunshine Glades, Eagles Peak, and the Quarterback Tournament. Thank you guys very much for being here and watching the video with us here today. We've got a bunch of different ways that we're going to show you guys here to play all these holes. So let's get it started here with hole number one, par four here on Eagles Peak. So the way that we're going to play this hole here is off the tee box. We're going to go with max distance plus 20% if we want to play this left-hand side. Now on this left-hand side, we're going to play this with about one to two bars of backspin depending on the wind that we have. Now if we have anything but a headwind, we're going to use two bars of backspin. But one bar of backspin, we're going to use that if we have uh, you know, a, a nasty headwind or something that's blowing really hard back at us and we have to get our ball further down there on that left-hand side. We're going to use about two to three bars of left-hand side spin. I would recommend about three bars and that 50% left curl. So then if you don't feel comfortable using that left-hand approach, you can always go with the right-hand approach as well. And there is a really great second shot for both of these options. And there actually is a third option as well if you do have quite a bit of topspin on your club. But what we're going to do here is play this with about full topspin or, you know, however much topspin you have. And we're going to get it as far as we can down here on this right-hand side, kind of as close to that bunker as we possibly can without going into the bunker. Because the more that we're up on that hill, then the less will be affected by the trees there. But here for the left-hand side... Our second approach here is going to be with the Grizzly. So we're going to have this at about mid-distance club here plus 10% elevation. So what we're going to want to do is essentially find our nice sweet spot there in the rough and go with about four bars of topspin out of the rough and a bar of right-hand side spin. Now you can play this specific shot here or if you're playing with a lower powered ball here, you could actually go with the back funnel shot if you have enough club distance at minimum distance with your sniper if you find yourself further back up on that hill and you cannot use your long iron but essentially we're going to come in here and clip that rough coming just in right at the pin trying to get that eagle and we were a half a ring there to a ring off i'd say about a half a ring off there we were very close so that's going to be a pretty good opportunity there for you guys to snag that eagle on hole number one with the rough bump there but like we were talking about here on this right hand side you can see my opponent there was trying to go towards more of the right hand side of the green and he was having a little bit of trouble there with the trees so if you're having trouble there with the trees, I would definitely recommend pushing your ball guide more to the left. If you push it more over here to the left, you could actually use even a little bit of right hand curl to help you get around the trees there to the left if you wanted to. But there is this nice funnel on the very backhand half of the green here that you can essentially put your ball full backspin, bar right hand side spin if you need to guide it more back towards the pin there. And essentially we're going to use that funnel to, you know, use that backspin to clip it right up and around where the fringe is to get it to roll straight back down towards the pin. And hopefully you get lucky and you catch that funnel and you can snag that eagle on hole number one, par four. Okay, guys, so here we've got hole number two, par three, the very first par three that we do have here today in the tournament for Eagle's Peak. So what we're going to do here on this specific shot here is as soon as we spawn and it is our turn to shoot, we're not going to move our target. And we're going to essentially start adjusting our ball to the pin from where our target already lies. So off the tee box here, we're going to play this at mid-distance plus 30%. 
So what we're trying to do here is play this with essentially three bars of backspin and about one to one and a quarter bars of right hand side spin. Now I would recommend using about a little bit of a click more of right hand side spin here than I used because we're trying to leave our ball guide one square shy of the pin so that that last little square right there is going to dive us back into the right and it's going to catch that pin. So that's essentially the, the exact shot there that we're trying to replicate, but we're gonna essentially go over this one more time to give you guys a better image on what you're looking for here. So right off the bat, like we talked about, we're not gonna move that target. Now I accidentally like flicked my target a little bit there, so I had to kind of move it back into place when I went to move it here, and that's, that's why you'll see it kind of wiggle around a little bit there. But we're trying to guide that the very tail end of that ball guide there straight back in towards the pin. Now we actually want to be, we want to have just a little bit more side spin there. We we do not want to adjust our, you know, we don't want to move our target to adjust where we think it's going to go. We want to essentially compensate with side spin and back spin to make sure we, you know, our target and our ball goes where it wants to go. So on this specific hole, we do not want to move our target at all. We just want to adjust our ball to the target and make sure that we can snag that hole in one. Moving right along here to our very first par five that we do have in the quarterback tournament. We've got hole number three, par five here for Sunshine Glades. So we're gonna go over a couple different ways here that we can play this from the left-hand side and to the right-hand side here. But the only way that I would really recommend playing this on the left-hand side here is if we have a tailwind and you know that you can reach that second platform down there. That's Playing this left-hand side is essentially going to be the best opportunity here at really snagging this albatross. So from the left-hand side, we're going to play this at max distance plus 10% elevation. We're going to use as much top spin on our club as we can, about one to two bars of right-hand side spin to guide us down the middle of this fairway here. And essentially, it's going to set ourselves up for a really nice second shot here at the pin. Now, the second hand shot for the left hand side is about two to three bars of backspin here with the short iron. And that's a straightforward shot right at the pin. We're going to use two to three bars of backspin straight at the pin, making sure we make a nice wind adjustment here at 0% elevation at mid distance here on our Hornet. So we're going to have to make sure that we can make this shot to snag that albatross. Now, if we find ourselves a little bit further back and we have to use our long iron, we can go with a long iron approach that has, you know, three to four bars of backspin straight at the pin as well. Or I could recommend you guys to pull it back into the rough there and go with a rough bump with about three to four bars of topspin straight out of the rough rolling onto the green there and into the pin now both of those are going to be fairly good options but the rough bump may not be as promising as uh, you know you want it to but we're going to go over here and talk about the right hand side approach as well because we also have a nice right hand side approach with the sniper that we can use as well so if we're playing the right hand side we're more than likely going to be playing this at about mid distance club here we're almost at max distance but you know we're gonna more than likely play it with about mid to max distance numbers i would just knock your numbers down just a little bit we're gonna play this with about 50 percent curl to the left hand side about two to three bars of top spin i really wouldn't recommend any more than that because we're just trying to essentially get our ball straight down on the very end of this platform as far as we can now the closer we are to the rough the better opportunity you'll have to the pin because you'll have more room with your club to adjust into overpower if you needed to or you know whatever but essentially we're trying to bounce it off of this platform that our target is on right now so we're going to play this second shot here from the right hand side with a bar of backspin and a bar of right hand side spin we're trying to essentially guide it right through the middle of these bushes leaving it about a square shy of the pin here because we know that our green is a, it's a little bit fast paced here so we know that it's going to continue rolling straight towards the pin so we're going to make an adjustment here at about max distance zero percent elevation here we're essentially trying to come in here 
bouncing through the middle of these bushes right onto the green and nailing that albatross there. So I've actually made that shot quite a few times before, um, as, as well as a lot of these shots in this tournament. So, um, you know, it's definitely going to be one of those approaches that I think a lot of those people will end up making out there and being able to snag that albatross here on hole number three. All right, moving on to our next par three that we have here today at Sunshine Glades in hole number four, par three in the quarterback tournament. So for the elevation on this specific shot here, we're going to be playing this at mid distance plus 10% elevation with just a half a bar of backspin to give us that little bit of control that we need on our ball to slow it down so it goes into the pin and it does not essentially hit the pin and ricochet out so we're going to basically leave it three squares shy of the pin because this is a little bit of a faster paced green and we're looking for our blue ring to be just into the rough line there on the left hand side where we're setting up our target so that's essentially going to let us bounce right on the little front of that plateau that little island and it's going to push us straight in towards the pin giving us the perfect speed that we need there to actually fall in but not roll too fast. Because as you can see here, I wanted to show my opponent's shot here because he was going to go with about a bar of backspin here straight at the pin uh, and he essentially found himself a little bit shy there as, as he was thinking he was going to be a little bit shy there. But he decided to go with no spin at all which I wanted to show you guys how his ball comes in without that little bit of backspin on your approach because, you know, he definitely, he had a nice straightforward shot here right at the pin, but unfortunately he came in too fast here and he ricochets right off of the pin straight off. So essentially you're going to have to make sure that you have that little bit of control on your ball guide or else you'll have too much speed coming across the green because the green like we talked about is pretty fair paced so your ball will be traveling at a decent speed across the green and with that half a bar of backspin you'll essentially have just the right amount of speed to be able to slow down so you just catch that pin and you're able to snag that hole in one there on hole number four par three all right though guys that is going to move us on over to the next par five that we do have in the tournament so on this specific hole here we are just going to be showing you guys the right hand side approach here because i know that's the approach that 99 percent of you are going to take so what we're going to do here is play this with as much top spin as we possibly can and off the tee box, we're going to play this at max distance, 0% elevation, with a couple bars of right-hand side spin to help guide us down the middle of the second fairway here. So we're looking to bounce off of the very first fairway there over the rough line and down this slanted fairway as far as we can to set ourselves up for a really nice second approach here at the pin. Now we can use one of two different options, but one option is obviously way better than the other, and that's the option you're going to see us go with here. Now you can put your target to the right there with the long iron and try to curl it in to the left with, uh, you know, about three to four bars of backspin and three bars, four bars of left-hand side spin, but it's a kind of guesstimate shot there as you really don't know where your ball guide's going. So to eliminate that curl, we're going to use the sniper here at minimum distance and essentially use that funnel on the backhand half of the green to try to clip our ball guide up and over onto the fringe and right down to the pin. Now we should have played this about a half a square to the left than we actually did because this hill in the back funnel is designed to push your ball guide more to the right. And that fringe may hold you up just a little bit and slow your ball guide down and push you back to the left. But essentially, we're going to have to make sure that we make a nice adjustment there at mid-distance to minimum distance there, plus 10% elevation on that second shot to catch that funnel on the backhand half so it pushes our ball guide more to the right and we catch the pin. 
All right, though, guys, moving on to the next par four that we have here today at Eagles Peak for hole number six. So off the tee box here, we're going to be playing this shot at max distance, 0% elevation. So if we have about six to seven bars of topspin, that's what we're going to use here. We can curl this around to the left here with about three bars of left-hand side spin. Two will work if you're using a ball that only has two, but you're going to have to compensate that with a little bit more curl to the left and make a nice, accurate, precise shot here, especially if you have a rough like we do, uh, or a rough like we do. If you have a wind like we do and you're essentially uh, trying to cheat yourself away from this rough line over there on the left-hand side. Now, we're trying to essentially get it up onto this very plateau so it sets us up for a nice second shot now we can potentially go with another option there and try to drive the green curling it around to the right a little bit bouncing it through the trees now that is a very hard shot to take so we just went with the more mainstream approach here and showed you guys how to lay up and actually make this second shot here at mid distance plus 30 percent here with your hornet now what we're going to do is play this with about a half a bar of backspin here to give us that control that we need on our ball so it doesn't blow past the hole or hit the pin and ricochet out because we're going too fast. We're essentially going to leave this about two squares shy of the pin as we bounce over and onto the green. We're, our second bounce is going to want to be right there by the fringe so that we know we have just enough speed there to be able to roll in and catch that pin. Now, we can potentially drive the green like we talked about there. And, you know, you may find yourself with a wind that you're capable of doing so. And if you can, more power to you. But we at least wanted to show you guys this approach here so that you guys knew how to make that second shot and the elevation on that shot if you find yourself having to go uh, you know, laying up and trying to make the eagle with that chip. Uh, so good luck on this one, guys. It may be a trickier one for some of you. Okay, though, guys, that's going to move us right on over to the last par three that we do have here in the quarterback tournament at hole number seven for Sunshine Glades. So off the tee box here, we're going to be playing this specific shot here at max distance plus 20% elevation. Now, what we're looking for here is about one to one and a half bars of backspin, depending on our wind. Now, as usual, if we have a tailwind, we're going to add just a little bit more backspin than we normally would here. And on this first shot here, you know, I was kind of guesstimating my elevation going into the hole, uh, you know, because we're not really memorizing every single hole and every single elevation. So we're going with something that's close and trying to make a decent shot and approach to that elevation. So we are a little bit off there on that shot. We played it with about 10% elevation there. Um, and essentially what we're going to do here is go over this again one more time to give you guys a better idea of really how to nail in this shot and give you a better idea of where you're going to want to line up. So what we're going to try to do is essentially leave our target and our ball guide here about one red ring from this bunker right in front of us. And we're essentially gonna leave it two squares shy of the pin where our ball guide lies. So we're wanting our ball guide to just bounce, you know, right about onto the fringe there where our third bounce would be. So we want our second bounce just before the fringe there. And the reason that we're moving our target two rings from where the bunker is because with the elevation that we do have it's actually going to blow us a ring forward because as you could see you know we were a little bit closer there to the bunker but we came in a little bit further to the right even though we hit great left moving right along here to the second to last hole that we've got here today though at hole number eight par four for sunshine glaze as well so off the tee box here, we can play this one of two different ways. Now, we don't actually have a clip here of driving the green here from island to island, but what you're going to do is essentially play that with six to seven bars of topspin straight right off the right-hand corner of this island there onto the other island and then onto the green. It's a pretty difficult shot to make, but if you can make a nice wind adjustment plus your 10% elevation, you should be very, very close at being able to get that ball on the green almost every single time. 
But what we're going to do here is if we play the left hand side, we're going to use about four bars of topspin. I wouldn't recommend any more than four bars of topspin here because essentially it's going to push you too far down here and you won't have, uh, you'll either end up in the rough or you won't have a decent shot at the pin because the, the little bumps on the, the green here will hinder your placement. So what we're going to do there is play that with about three bars of left hand side spin, about 40 to 50 percent curl, and then it's going to leave us either with a short iron shot at minimum distance, like true minimum distance. You may be able to go with a dunk if you're lucky, or a full backspin approach with the thorn, but more often than not here, we're going to have a wedge to the pin, which is a kind of a difficult shot here at max or mid distance with the uh, the end bringer or the rapier. But what I would recommend doing is actually extending out your ball guide using full top spin so that you can, you know, kind of take away a lot of the wind effect and pull your target back towards you so that you can extend out the ball guide and it's less affected so you can come in there so we would have actually made that shot if we wouldn't have hit great left but this is going to be a trickier one for some of you all right though guys that is going to lead us right on over to the last hole that we have here today in the quarterback tournament at hole number nine par five here for eagles peak so right off the tee box here, we have a couple different ways here that we can play this specific hole as well. We can either play it here to the left onto that other plateau down there onto the second fairway, or we can play it hooked around here to the right, staying on this fairway that our target is on now. But if we're playing the left-hand side approach here, the ideal position is to actually get your ball to double bounce right over onto the end of this fairway over the rough line and onto the second plateau fairway there to the left. Now we can use about a bar to three bars of right hand side spin to kind of guide us towards the right there and over that little rough line. But the ideal approach there is to double bounce and clip at the very end of that fairway, bouncing your ball up and over onto the second platform. So that's going to leave us with a nice second shot here at mid or max distance here, minus 10% elevation. So what we're going to do here is essentially kind of undercompensate our ball and our target. So what we're going to do is try to play this with about a bar of top spin here. We can play it with no spin actually and kind of move it a little bit further up. But what we're looking for is essentially our ball guide to be just beyond where that rough line is. Now I made my wind adjustment at 0% elevation here and that's why you're actually going to see us come in and just clip the rough here before we hit the fairway but if we make a nice straightforward shot here we can hit a perfect ball we're going to come over there and we're going to bounce clipping on that fairway straight in there towards the pin and we're going to be very very close at being able to snag that albatross now this will be one of the more trickier albatrosses to make in the tournament in my opinion uh, so definitely going to be a trickier shot so make sure that you can make a nice wind adjustment on that and that your ball guide is in a nice position the wind adjustment is essentially going to be the determining factor of what really makes your shot there so if you can make that nice wind adjustment you'll either be right beside the pin there chipping it in for the eagle or you'll be able to put your ball in for a nice eagle as well but we're going to go over the right hand side option here as well because it is a pretty decent approach and it shortens up your distance to the pin just a little bit now we're always going to use that little bit of overpower if we need it but what we're going to do here is try to play this with the apoc or the you know the extra mile will work here as well just make sure that you're using about full curl there on the extra mile excuse me but what we're going to do here is essentially curl this right around to the right here at about 50 60 percent curl making sure that we don't go in the rough on the right hand side but we're essentially going to play it with about five to seven bars of top spin as well getting it down this fairway as far as we possibly can because it's going to set our salt up here for a really nice second shot at the pin with the sniper now we can play that second the same second shot that we did here on the left hand side but we're really going to be curling it around to the right so instead of doing that we're actually going to play this over the trees here onto the right hand side platform so what we're going to do is play this with about three bars of left hand side spin and almost full back spin here with the sniper we're going to actually leave this just a little bit shy of where the pin is our ball guide see mine is actually a little bit 
over past where the pin is. We need to pull it back towards us just a little bit so that that hill can push us back and further down towards where the pin is. Now, if you use a little bit of curl here, oh, it shot. will push you a little bit further back into the left. But the ideal approach there is to get your ball to come up and around straight down towards the pin there. Now, as you nice can see, off. we came in fairly far over the pin and we had our ball straight at where the pin was going to go. So you're definitely going to have to make sure that you have it just a little bit before because that hill will push your target a lot further over the pin than you think it will. All right, though, guys, that's going to be the wrap up there for the pro and expert division guide and walkthrough video there for the quarterback tournament. Thank you guys so much for being here with us today and watching the video. We really hope that this helped you. It definitely takes a lot of time and effort to put into the guides and we work very hard. So seeing you guys out there and all of your guys' support we really do appreciate it so much. So if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. Smash that like button, guys. And we got a lot of content to come, so stay tuned. And we will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.